गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज माई लेक्चर नंबर वन फॉर पोएम नंबर टू एन एलिमेंट्री स्कूल क्लास रूम इन इस्लाम फॉर क्लास ट्वेल्थ सब्जेक्ट इंग्लिश गिवन इन बुक फ्लेमिंगो द पोएम एन एलिमेंट्री स्कूल क्लास रूम इन इस्लाम इज कम्पोज बाय स्टीफन स्पेंडर बिफोर आई बिगिन विद द पोएम it is better to introduce you with the poet stephen spender whose life span was from 1909 to 1995 he was an english poet and an essayist he left university college oxford without taking a degree and went to berlin in 1930 he took a keen interest in politics and declared himself to be a socialist and pacifist His famous books include Poems of Dedication, The Edge of Being, The Creative Element, The Struggle of the Modern and an Autobiography that that is named World Within World. This poem deals with the theme of social injustice and class inequalities. He presents the theme by talking of two different worlds. which are incompatible those worlds are the worlds of the poor and the rich the world of the rich and the civilized has nothing to do with the world of narrow lanes and crammed holes the gap between these two different worlds highlight social disparities and class inequalities and through this poem the poet appeals to the educated and affluent sections of the society to better the lot of slum children through education so that this will remove social injustice and class inequalities from our society let's begin the poem stanza wise the first stanza of the poem says far far from gusty waves these children's faces first of all you need to understand the meaning of these these refer to the children sitting in the slum classroom the poet stephen spender says the children sitting in this slum classroom are very far from the gusty waves gusty waves means stormy waves right here the poet wants to tell you that the children of the slum are very far from the world of enjoyment and entertainment these children are like rootless weeds rootlet rootless weeds means unwanted plants which are no more required by anyone in the society so the poet is comparing these children with those rootless weeds which are no more required in the society therefore indirectly he wants to explain that these children are no more required in the society the hair torn round their pallor pallor means paled faces their torn hair are falling onto their paled faces and then he starts describing the children sitting in the classroom he begins with the tall girl with her weighed down head there is a tall girl sitting in the classroom who is sitting with her weighed down head weighed down head means the girl has put her head down as it appears the girl is overburdened due to the poverty she is very poor and she is a poverty stricken girl and that burden of poverty is very heavily sitting on to her head that she is unable to raise it properly then he talks about the paper seeming boy paper seeming boy means the boy who appears like paper who is very thin with red eyes usually rats have big eyes red eyes are compared with hunger here the poet means to write that the paper seeming boy the boy who is very thin who is undernourished who is not properly or physically grown up yet has red eyes means hunger is gleaming in his eyes and that is clearly seen that the eyes are very big therefore hunger is 
gleaming through his eyes then he says the stunted unlucky here here means successors unlucky here of twisted bones here i have told you successors reciting a father's gnarled disease here the poet talks about the boy who is unfortunately suffering from malnutrition and his growth is also stunted means not properly developed he has also inherited from his father twisted bones twisted bones the bones which are not properly they are bent or distorted bones and he has inherited the poverty disease and despair from his parents his lesson from his desk this child is reciting the lesson by sitting on his desk the lesson is of the gnarled disease that he has inherited from his father gnarled is a noted disease that the child has got in his throat and that produces a constant sound so the child is not reciting what the teacher is teaching but the child is reciting the gnarled disease that he has inherited from his father his body is also deformed because of the twisted bones which he has inherited he appears to be as sick as his parents right now the poet says at back of the dim class why does the poet says dim class the classroom is dim because there is no ventilation and lack of electricity due to the lack of electricity and poor ventilation the classroom is dim and one boy who is sitting at the back of this dim classroom who is unnoted unnoted means not noted by anybody else he is a sweet boy living a dream in his eyes this is a sweet tender looking student who is sitting at the back of the class this boy is different from the others because he has a dream in his eyes he is dreaming and probably thinking about a better future he is lost in his own dream and watching a squirrel's game in a tree room other than this other than this means other than what is happening in the classroom this boy who is sweet and young remains unnoted by anybody else sitting at the back of the dim classroom is lost in watching a squirrel playing outside his classroom in a tree room tree room means a hole in the stem of a tree that is called the home of or the room of the squirrel the squirrel is coming out of it going in to br- uh, keep what she brings or what it brings from outside world and keeps it safe inside that hole this boy is literally lost in watching the squirrel playing its game of going in coming out of that tree room and he is totally unaware of what is happening in the classroom so this boy is quite different from the other boys children before i proceed to stanza 2 let me explain this first stanza again for your better understanding the poet stephen spender in this first stanza says that the children of the slum are very far from the world of enjoyment and entertainment these children are compared with rootless weeds means unwanted plants these children like unwanted plants are no more required in the society their torn hair are falling onto their paled faces then he starts describing the children sitting in the classroom first of all he talks about the tall girl who is sitting 
ड्यू टू द डिप्रेशन और ड्यू टू द बर्डन ऑफ द पोवर्टी दिस गर्ल इज ओवर बर्डनड ड्यू टू पोवर्टी देयर फोर शी इज सिटिंग विद हर वेड डाउन हेड देन ही टॉक्स अबाउट द बॉय हु अपीयर्स लाइक पेपर विद रैट साइज बिकॉज हंगर इज ग्लीमिंग इन हिज आईज दिस बॉय हैज वेरी बिग आईज लाइक ऑफ अ रैट that explains or describes the hunger in his eyes then he talks about the stunted unlucky hair of twisted bones he talks about the boy who has inherited from his father a naughty disease in his throat this boy is very much unlucky who has inherited only a disease from his father nothing else he is sitting at his seat and reciting the lesson of that gnarled disease which produces a constant sound from his desk then he talks about the classroom which is very dim due to lack of proper ventilation and electricity then the poet talks about one sweet and young boy who is sitting unnoted at the back of that dim classroom and he finds this boy different from others because this boy has a dream in his eyes it appears to the poet that if this boy is given a chance can fulfill his dream the boy is completely lost in watching one squirrel playing outside the classroom that squirrel is going in a tree room that hollow stem in which she goes in and comes out and is the boy is lost in watching that squirrel playing the game and he is unaware of what is happening in the classroom now we will learn the literary devices used in stanza 1 by the poet before i tell you the literary devices you must know what is a literary device it's a technique that a writer uses to produce a special effect in his writings so in this stanza one if you see the first literary device used is repetition in the very beginning of the poem the poet says far far from gusty waves use of far is used to stress on the distance therefore it is called repetition the poet has used far far from gusty waves use of far to stress on the distance that is called repetition the second device is simile simile is given in this phrase second line like rootless weeds like rootless weeds means here children are compared with rootless weeds when two things are compared by using like or as there we call it simile and the third device is metaphor metaphor is also a comparison of two things but without using as or like so here he says paper seeming boy boy is compared with paper as he is thin in stanza 2 the poet describes the classroom in stanza 1 he described the students in the classroom in this he will describe the classroom on sour cream walls donations donations means things given or received in charity shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities belled flory tyrolese valley one open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these in these four lines the poet says that the classroom walls are painted with cream color the classroom is not well maintained the pale cream walls which were painted long ago with the help of donations make the place look more miserable and sad probably there is a portrait of shakespeare on the wall 
This is ironical. It is put up in a place where there is no serious teaching going on and Shakespeare is known for his great work in English literature. And these children who are sitting in the classroom are very far from the world of education. So there is a simile used by, sorry, irony used by the poet when he says Shakespeare's head. Cloudless dawn and civilized dome, these suggest the monotonous life in a slum. These slums are surrounded by the civilized city and the children cannot experience the beauty of the sky at dawn and are unaware of it. All around them are concrete structures of the cities. The life in the slum contrasts, contrasts with the cloudless sky at dawn. Dawn means early morning. And concrete structures which override the cities. The poet says, There is also a picture of beautiful valley which is decorated with bells and flowers. That valley is Tyrolese Valley. Tyrolese Valley is a valley in Austria. And he talks about an open-handed map. Open-handed map means the map which is drawn by the dictators of their wish. The dictators have drawn this open-handed map which is decorated into their classroom that is avoiding the world its world. Here you need to understand this map which is drawn by the dictators of their will. That map shows the world which those dictators want to show in it. But this world map does not show these slum areas or these slum children anywhere on it. The poet presents the contrast by saying the world given to us by God is full of all the bounties. Whereas the world of these slum children is full of poverty and hunger. The world which these children see is not the real world. And for these children, these windows not the map, their world. Where all their future is painted with a fog. Here you need to understand the contrast that the poet shows. He says, The world of these children is confined to the narrow, dusty streets of the slum. The map in the classroom gives them hope and aspirations and motivates them to explore the world. But they will never be able to see that world because... These children can get the glimpse of the outside world from the windows and it is the far beyond their reach. They are away, very away from nature. These slum children have a bleak and foggy future in store for them. Their future is painted with fog. It is blurred by hopelessness. There is no hope for the slum children. Instead of the normal blue sky, they live under the lead sky. Lead sky means dark, dull, polluted. That shows no hope, no flourishment for these children. This sort of atmosphere hints at their monotonous life and the slum children remain confined throughout their lives in these filthy and dirty narrow lanes of the slum. They are away from the glory of natural beauty of the rivers, mountains and stars. Let us recall stanza 2. In this stanza 2, the poet Stephen Spender talks about the classroom. He says that the classroom walls are painted with sour cream color which is very much unpleasant to the eyes of the children. And he talks about all the donated items which are present onto its walls for its beautification, which includes Shakespeare's portrait and cloudless at dawn. There is a picture that gives them the scene of rising sun. 
there are civilized domes riding all cities all educational institutions there is a picture of tyrolese valley which is belled and flory there is an open handed map which is drawn by the dictators of their will that is awarding the world that they want to show in it but that world map does not show any picture of slum areas or slum children all these things are ironically used by the poet then he talks about these children he says all these things are present in the world but for these children only the windows of the classroom are present from there they can see only and only that their future is painted with fog means there is no surety of bright future because they can see only their future which is locked or sealed in the narrow streets of the slum area and from there they can see a dark sky a bleak sky that does not give them any hope to live their life in better conditions these children are very far from rivers capes and the stars of words means these children are very far from the world of enjoyment nature and education now i'll tell you the literary devices used in stanza 2 beta if you see that there is metaphor as i just told you metaphor comparison of two things without using as or like here it is sour cream walls walls are described to be dull as sour cream is sour cream means unpleasant creamy color so there is metaphor second metaphor is used in narrow street sealed with a lead sky the future of the kids is described as limited therefore it is metaphor used there then there is another literary device that is assonance assonance means repetition of vowel sound if you see in belled flory tyrolese valley e e is repeated so assonance is repeated of vowel sound so in all these words there is assonance literary device then there is allusion allusion is a reference to well known person or a place it is used shakespeare's head shakespeare is a well known person his reference is given here so it is allusion and then it is tyrolese valley as i told you in the explanation tyrolese is a very popular valley in austria therefore the the reference of a well known person or a place shows allusion so there is allusion in shakespeare's head and tyrolese valley children this is the end of stanza 2 explanation and in my next lecture i will explain you stanza 3 and stanza 4 of the same poem children on the basis of understanding the poem you are supposed to summarize stanza 1 and stanza 2 in your fair english notebook thank you have a nice day